Living with the fishermen quite intimately for some months, I distinctly got the impression that it is not money alone which drives them into such a wholehearted involvement in the work. The challenge and beauty of the open sea, the risk and fun of tracking the shoal of fish, setting up the net and hauling up in eager expectation, all this together have a charm for them. Dr. Bikas Ray Chaudhary, an anthropologist with the Anthropological Survey of India, spent the entire season of 1967-68 with a very unique group of fisherfolk at Jambudweep, a small island at the edge of the Sundarban Biosphere Reserve in West Bengal. His observations are recorded in the book Moon and Net. These fishermen from the Jalia Kaibartas community have their roots in East Pakistan. After partition, they were resettled in different parts of Eastern India. Kumadhari Das is one of the oldest living persons from this community. Fishermen by birth, they were soon drawn to the sea. During the mid-50s, they first established their fishing camps in Jambudweep, a reflection of their deep understanding of the sea. Jambudweep was a place where the sea 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 was. Jambudweep is located at the southwestern edge of the Sundarban Delta in the 24 Parganas district of West Bengal. Its natural topography offered several advantages to the fishermen. The presence of mangroves and mixed plantations provided protection from cyclones and made fuel wood available. It was closer to the fishing ground and had a creek that enabled the fishermen to take the fishing boats right next to the fishing camp, making it possible for them to dry their catch immediately on returning from the sea. We nearly arranged to check camp ground, fishing camp. Creek is on both sides of the creek. Yes, on both sides of the creek. Another advantage was the open grassy areas of Jambudweep on which they could dry their catch. Since their natal villages were further away, the men would move to Jambudweep for four months during the fishing season, leaving their families behind. Over the years, this system got established, giving rise to a very distinctive fishing community, transient in nature and comprising only of men. What makes this practice probably very interesting is, is its, its antiquity and the fact that they haven't changed their nets and they haven't shifted to more uh, a very, very mechanized form of, form of fishing. That they sustainably harvest fish. Every October, nearly 10,000 fish workers from in and around Kakdweep set out in their boats or Budbutis. Their journey to Jambudweep 
covers a distance of 28 miles, which in good weather takes about four hours. The fish camps are makeshift. Different areas are demarcated. Living quarters, cooking and storage areas are usually together. Each camp has a shrine dedicated to Ma Ganga. Next to it is a miniature shrine for Badr Sahib, a Muslim fakir. The structures are made of hogla, which is a grass found in Kakdweep. Bamboo is also used. The rest of the area is for drying beds and drying racks. The fisher folk have a deep sense of reverence and before starting each task, they offer their prayers to the deities. Early in the season, the fishing boats set out into the sea to cast their nets. Their traditional skills and thorough knowledge of the sea come handy in finding the perfect location for the fishing ground. The bamboo cannot be pitched on the rise of the seabed as the soil there is sandier and cannot hold the pole. The dip parts of the seabed, known locally as khari, are good to hold the nets as they have sticky clay soil or aital mati. Once pitched, these traditional bag nets are left undisturbed for good catch to come streaming in. These funnel-shaped bag nets or bindi jal are characteristic to this fishing community and are often referred to as a person with a body part attributed to each element like the eyes, the hands and the mouth. The size of the mesh decreases all the way from the mouth to the tip in order to balance the flow of water through the net. The tip is made of very fine mesh and is tied with a rope. This is where the fish is finally trapped. The fishing crew stays on in the sea for the rest of the fishing season, constantly monitoring the nets, waiting hours for the tide to change. When the flow of the current shifts from high tide to low, or from low to high, a point of equilibrium throws the net to a sleeping position, a signal to haul in the catch. In a 24-hour cycle, there could be as many as three to four hauls. Among important papers, there is a perception about a titi, among your matter. Fantastic. Once the catch is loaded, the carrier boats take over. While the fishing boats stay put in the sea, the carrier boats ferry the catch back to the island. The boats enter the island through the creek. And anchor right next to the camp. This is a big advantage as the catch can be washed immediately before it's dried. No time is wasted in reaching the drying beds because of the proximity of the carrier fishing boat. 
The drying area is covered with dry grass over which a net is spread. This keeps the fish clean and free from sand dust. The fresh catch is spread in single rows and left to dry under the sun. All these factors add to the quality of the fish that is dried at Jambudweep. The drying process reflects a system that is totally environment friendly. The fish are dried directly under the sun. No external preservatives are used and the packing is done in gunny bags. The dry fish industry of Jambudweep is the primary source of income for most of the people working here. An average family here earns anywhere between rupees 10,000 to 20,000 per season. Added to this, depending on the season's profit, the fish workers may also get to take a load of fish back home. When the season ends, the temporary structures are brought down before the fishermen return to their homes. Over the years, fishermen have begun leaving a few implements and structures behind to reduce infrastructure cost every season. Today, however, after almost 50 years of sustainable fishing, their lives have been brought to a standstill. On May 3, 2002, the Ministry of Environment and Forest issued a directive to evict all illegal encroachments on forest land in various states and union territories before the 30th of September 2002. This directive ignored the circular issued earlier in 1990 by the MOEF itself, offering a framework for the resolution of disputes related to forest land between tribal people and the state. Following the May Directive, the State Forest Department stopped issuing passes to the fishermen from 2002, a practice that has been going on since the 1950s. I don't know why they have issued this order. In the name of encroachment, they want to evict these fishermen from this island. But this is not, an, not at all encroachment. This is the transient fishing of this island and these activities is going on last 57 years. I don't know why they have raised this controversy. I am not sure that the forest is going to be a forest. The forest is going to be a forest. The forest is going to be a forest. The forest is going these are copies of passes issued in the 1970s to as recently as 1999. The forest department also were aware of it. Then why didn't uh, the object written uh, at that point of time? The temporary hutments and implements left behind by the fish workers in Jambudweep were also burnt down by the forest department. Massive godowns are constructed on the island and these godowns are stored with the mangrove forest cut down for the purpose of using them as fuel wood by the laborers and the people who have settled down there. <laughs> Where the forest department really fails is to understand many of these many of many of the aspirations of, of these communities. Most of them probably don't want anything more than a, just a patch of land to dry fish for a few months. Despite the chief minister's go ahead to the fishermen for the use of Jambudweep last year, the forest department blocked the creek with RCC pillars. We had erected a check post at the mouth of the two creeks to prevent any unauthorized entry into the reserve forest waters. It is not a permanent blockade, it was a check post. So we had erected pillars 
and these pillars are supposed to be closed with the chains so that if somebody can produce valid permit for a valid reason for entering the reserve forest with their trawlers or boats or whatever it be, we shall allow them to enter. The narrow gap between the cement pillars made it difficult for the boats to pass through, resulting in the unfortunate loss of lives during a cyclonic storm. Ten fishermen lost their lives that day. Ratan Das and Anil Das were amongst them. The loss of these men is of deeper consequence back home as they were the sole breadwinners for their families. These families are poor and without Jambudweep, it's hard for them to comprehend any kind of future. In December 2002, the Supreme Court delegated a central empowered committee to advise on this issue. Today, the recommendations put forward by this committee threatens the future of the transient fishing community. <laughs> সেইটার আমরা হচ্ছে পাবো না বেকার সমস্যা হয়ে যেতে হবে ঘুরতে হবে না হলে দেশে কাজকর্ম করতে হবে বছরে ধরো আমার 10 টাকা ইনকাম হয় সেই জায়গায় এটা যদি 5 মাসে যদি বন্ধ হয়ে যায় কাজটা তাহলে আমার 10 টাকা থেকে 5 টাকা কমে আসছে দ্য সিইসি রিপোর্ট স্টেটস দ্যাট জাম্বুদ্বীপ ইজ আ রিজার্ভ ফরেস্ট এরিয়া এন্ড ইজ প্রোটেক্টেড আন্ডার দ্য ফরেস্ট কনজারভেশন অ্যাক্ট অফ 1980 এন্ড দ্য সুপ্রিম কোর্ট অর্ডার অফ 1996 the Forest Conservation Act prohibits the use of forest land by communities who have moved there after 1980. All the encroachments that we find presently is an encroachment after 1981, 1982-83 onwards. So it can never be considered as an old encroachment. Their activity is absolutely transient between the months of October and February. And uh, that is why it is not an encroachment. And they have been using this island much before the enactment of the Forest Conservation Act in 1980. The CEC report also points a finger at the fishermen for the large-scale mangrove destruction at Jambudweep. We do not have any data to show that. If it's due to these people and their fuelwood needs, the number of people that are there, the number of families that would be staying in Jammudip, that number of people can, in 30 years, would have finished their entire island off. Satellite imagery, is, which is totally based on the science, the scientific evidence, shows that the cutting down of the mangrove forest had been taking place, had started as early as, as 1982, not prior to that one. Satellite imagery is important, but ground truthing is equally important. What we need to have is a proper authentic study, long term, for one full season to see actually what happens. Apart from the fact that the island has been used by the fishermen for more than four decades, the first-hand account of topography of the island from the 1960s to now presents an interesting picture. <laughs> আর ওই মাছখানটার মাছ এরিয়া ছিল সেই জায়গাটা কিছু জঙ্গল ছিল তবে খুব বড় জঙ্গল কিছু ছিল না এই যে একেবারে ডেন্স ফরেস্ট সেরকম কিছু ছিল না আই পার্সোনালি বিলিভ দ্যাট সাম পার্ট অফ দ্য আইল্যান্ড डेफिनेटলি ইজ প্ল্যান্টেশনস ইটস নট প্রিস্টাইন ম্যানগ্রোভ অ্যাজ ইজ বিং ক্লেমড বাই দ্য বাই দ্য ডিপার্টমেন্ট দ্যাট আই এম নট কনভিন্সড দ্যাট দ্যাটস দ্যাটস দ্য স্টোরি এন্ড ইভেন অ্যানাদার পার্ট অফ দ্য নর্দার্ন পার্ট অলসো ডিডন্ট লুক টু বি pristine mangrove southern part near the fishing camp definitely is not pristine mangrove a lot of cashmere plantations so that's something we need to take into account when instead of saying that they're actually destroying biodiversity and all these things 
we should be very very clear actually what we mean by biodiversity and how they are destroying biodiversity if they are preserving biodiversity in the sea by not uh, strip netting and using other uh, very very destructive measures that that that's something very important and rather than uh, saying that they are destroyers of nature it's it's a question of actually users of nature fishermen ado ekhaner kono gas kate na ora sai gas thakle fishermen er suvidha je nodi nodir srut ta khub kom lagbe ebong jombude bhangbe na ar gas na thakle to taratari bhenge jabe shei jonno fishermen ara saite se ekhane jonno gas thak gas thakle amader suvidha ki amader khuti kono thik thakbe na bangla amra ei bochor byabsha korte parchi aro 10 bochor byabsha korar asha ache ar bhenge gele amader tar byabsha korar jayga nei The dry fish industry in Jambudweep is the lifeline of over a lakh people in the area. It is a source of rich protein food for the poorer masses, especially those living in the remote areas of the northeast. The fish from Jambudweep is sold at markets in Ulubiria and Calcutta, and from there it is sent to the northeastern states, generating a revenue of over 10 crores for the state of West Bengal. the economic upliftment of the fishermen gdp of my state and total the dry fish also a protein food especially for the north east indian people they are supplying the food and the create a huge employment the forest department and the central empowered committee in their observations of the island have failed to consider the loss of livelihood of not just thousands of fish workers depending on dry fish production but also the loss to ancillary industries dry fish business takes place only for 3 to 4 months and that too dry fish has got a very very limited market in our country it is not a very very large activity involving all the local fishermen almost no local fishermen gets involved in the fish drying business মুদিপ থেকে আমরা মালটা আনি জম্বুদ্বীপ যদি বন্ধ হয়ে যায় তখন আমাদের এই যে পঁচিশ তিরিশটা লেবার খাটে বেকার হয়ে যাবে হয়তো সামথিং কাজ থাকবে আর কি যেমন ছোট্ট কাজ হয়তো পাঁচ বস্তা দশ বস্তা পেলাম হয়েছে কোনো কারো আমারও পেট ভরবো না লেবার কো পেট ভরতে পারবো ওই জন্য আমরা বেকার হয়ে যাব জম্বুদ্বীপটা হলে আমাদের চার মাসের জন্য প্রচুর মাল আসে বিভিন্ন রকম খালি আমি একটা আরোদ্দার না ওরকম প্রচুর আরোদ্দারও বাসে তারা যদি mal production na dite pare tale amra kotha theke ki probably what sets jomudip apart is the scale of the fishery it's something which is going to have a lot of economic ramifications with the fishery is closed i would not have believed earlier that if somebody told me just a small island is uh, providing direct or indirect employment and uh, sustenance to a population of anything between 1 to 2 lakhs this is something that is uh, unbelievable but true As a solution the Central Empowered Committee has recommended the use of Haribanga Island as an alternative fishing site. Oh it's a cruel joke. The uh, Haribanga Island is not even a tenth of the uh, Jambudweep. And at high tide level I don't think you will get even 100 meters across. And uh, at, there are um, up to around 40 of these large so called fishing units operating on jambudeep not even one of that unit can be relocated in haribanga even amongst the forest officials there seem to be differences vis-a-vis -vis the choice of haribanga haribanga is the uh, lower long sand haribanga island that is one area but that island may, may not be uh, big enough uh, to accommodate all these uh, transient fishmen uh, well that island is little smaller but uh, it is full of sand this can be a good alternative site it is outside the reserve forest area it is having a long long sandy area uh, beaches it also has sweet water available there it also has some creeks where they can keep their trawlers and boats uh, space for parking of the boats there is no creek in lower long sand For the hundred odd families already living here, life has been rough. Just last year, the cyclones destroyed most of their boats. ये बात पूरे दिन तक के झोर आ चुके, हाँ, इसे कहाँ डाय? मतलब तीन घंटा बैपी का है। तार पूरे छः लोग में जैसे जिम्मेदार सवाई बिच्छिन्नो, नौकों गुलो भेंगे जाए कुतुब, ये बात है। 
একটা গাছ নাই আমি বারবার ওখানে বলে এসেছি হারিবাঙ্গার সরে একটা গাছ নাই বালি ওখানে আমরা টিকতে পারবো না ওখানে আমাদের হবে না ওখানে আমাদের খাল নাই ওখানে আবার এই আমাদের এই মেকানিক বুট ওখানে ডুবে না ওই যে আমি নিশুত না ছাড়া হ্যাঁ বলি আসিনি ওখানে তো আমরা ডুবতে পারবো না তো মৎস্যজীবীরা কি ওখানে মরতে যাবো আমাদের গাছের তো দরকার The fishermen here fish near the shore. Often, the quality of dry fish produced here is only fit for poultry feed. Jumbudivir maasir sange hari hangar maas thora reita tofat. Jumbudivir bora bora maas bora bora no go diye. Bora bora board diye je gobi samudra maas thori. Bora bora maas thori. Seiglo manusir khawar maas thori hoy. Seikan maati yache maas suno korar su bebastha yache kora jai. Ebang amra ei hari hangate. যে মাছগুলো শুকনো শুকনো করি সেইগুলো নব্বই পঁচানব্বই ভাগ মাছ মানে পোলট্রি বা ফিস মিলে জন্য তৈরি করি আর যেগুলো টুকটাক মাছগুলো হয়তো পাঁচ ভাগ মাছ আমরা নিজেদের খাবারদের জন্য তৈরি করি নি দিস আর অল টেকনিক্যাল থিংস ফর দ্য ম্যান দিস ইউ গেট টু নো ইফ ইউ আস কোয়েশ্চেন্স টু দ্য ফিশ ম্যান দে আর ইন্ডিজিনাস উইসডাম ইজ ফ্যান্টাস্টিক and uh, they're not looked at very carefully and even if we in principle agree uh, that alternatives should be provided people should be given land for land and all these things i'm not convinced that the forest department really has the ability to actually remove people relocate them successfully ironically while on one hand the forest department is working hard to save 200 hectares of land from the jambudweep fishing community it has gone ahead and signed an MOU with the Sahara Group to convert 750 hectares of virgin islands of the Sundarbans to a global ecotourism hotspot. By changing the word tourism to ecotourism is not going to change the distractions. If by maintaining ecological balance without disturbing the ecosystem, if somebody wants to do some tourism, which should be ecotourism ecologically sustainable tourism why should you object to it that's why mahatma gandhi said we have enough resources in the world for the need of all but we do not have enough resources for the greed of all that is precisely the problem so when we believe that uh, tourism can go on and there will be no detriment we are fooling ourselves and tourism on this scale cannot be without problems whatever be uh, our best case scenarios we should always prepare for worst case scenarios in case of high budget tourists uh, local benefit is not that much the affluence it will be generated in the hotels and all you know, there should be in house arrangement for the sewage treatment plant unless those are there uh, there are some uh, danger to the pollution problem of the uh, creeks if sahara has the right to move around the sundarban so so do all the fishermen as simple as that sometimes it is needed that a, a little change in similar type of profession part of them can become guides part of them can also shift to towards uh, jharkhali side where lot of tourist influx will be there amake ajke shobujje giye mas dhorte bolle আমি তো গিয়ে ধরতে পারবো না এখন তাহলে এই যে তাদের একটা এত বছরের যে একটা কালচারাল হেরিটেজ ডেভেলপ করেছে এবং এই লোকগুলোকে আজকে যদি এখানে মাছ ধরতেই না দেওয়া হয় তাহলে একটা হচ্ছে তাদের একটা তাদের জীবন জীবিকা যে একটা ছন্দ পতন হতে বাধ্য The CEC report has gone on to describe Jambudweep as the unofficial gateway to India. Geographically, Jambudweep Island is the farthest island from Bangladesh in the Sundarban Reserve Forest Area and one of the islands closest to the Indian coast. The possibilities of illegal incursions here are extremely remote. That's what is amazing that uh, probably uh, many decisions on this country are today being taken by a handful of people without really understanding what it really means for many other people and that's a very worrisome factor while these debates rage back and forth real lives are being affected in kakdeep where the families of these fish workers live
দম্পতি না হলে মরে যাব উপায় <laughs> Time is running out for the fisher folk and their survival depends on the hope that they will return to Jambudweep to cast their nets in the sea as they have done year after year. one end you are supporting heritage and at the same time you are not allowing a group of people to follow their heritage this is simple contradiction fishing community um, and the forest can definitely Uh, cooperate and ensure that uh, both the fishing takes place and the forests are protected mm. i think the uh, uh, the chief minister of bengal himself has uh, once said that the uh, fish and the forest can coexist so there's no reason why it cannot be done it can definitely be done not that the forest has to survive at the cost of the fishermen or the fishermen has to survive at the cost of the forest or they have to be evicted to make room for tourism this approach is not correct all three can be synchronized and all three can thrive together only we have to take a balanced and integrated approach to meet the challenge of the day today and in future